Today, we take a look at Neon Knights. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Lee from Geek City USA here. Today, uh, we're going to talk about a game called Neon Knights. Now, Neon Knights is a game that I had an opportunity to do a print and play of to kind of check out. It's coming up on Kickstarter. It's going to be on Kickstarter. I think it's, it's October 10th. And this is not a sponsored uh, review. This is not a paid review. This is, I just had a chance to get the print and play files. So I figured I love to do print and play stuff. So I would print it out, have some friends over and check it out and see how this game runs. So we'll take a minute and we'll jump into it and I'll give you a brief overview. Okay guys, so here is the base setup of the game. Now remember, this is this is purely, purely, this is a print and play prototype. Um, the final version, I guarantee you will look better. If you look online, the art looks great and you won't be using little cars from the game of life. So when you start here, I set this up for three players. So you know, the the setup will vary depending on the number of players with regards to maybe how much damage you could take. Again, I, I may get some of the um, some of the wording wrong uh, with regards to the rules. I, I probably will screw up some of these rules, but I just kind of want to, you know, give you a general overview here of everything that there is. So over here, these are your sponsors. These are your parts. These are your specials. You have um, these are skill cards, they look like the brain, and these over here are um, like fan bets. So at the start of the game, you set everything up, right? You, you put all your cubes in the appropriate location. Once you get everything set up here, you're going to take these skill cards over here and you, you shuffle them out, everybody gets an even amount, and you discard any left, and then you do a draft for them. So let me grab a, a deck here. So what you would do is you would go through and you would figure out, okay, this is my stack. What do I want? And then I would pick one. Say I want this one, and I'd pass this over to the next person, and I would get, you know, and they would give me their deck, and we would run in a circle until we all, um, until all the cards are in our hands. So everybody gets, has their own stack at the end of it, right? So let's pretend we've all traded, or we've all done our thing. So when you start the game, you go through the action phase. So you have seven days until race day. One through four, you take actions. Day five, you get paid, and then you take an action. Day six, you take an action, and day seven, you take no actions, you just race. So of your actions, you can do a multitude of different things. You can take a sponsor. Another action is you can visit a shop. So you can buy a part. You could buy a special, like for example, this is a weapon. So if I bought this, I could install this right here where my weapons go. You can draw a fan bet. These are like hidden achievements. You can repair armor. For every five bucks, you can increase your armor. And then you can train your skills. And that is where you, you take these skills. And these are jacked into your brain. All right, so let's say hypothetically, we've gone through four turns, and now, or four days, and now it's the fifth day, it's payday. So on payday, if this were my car, what I would do is I would take these two here, my two sponsors would pay me what they, what they owe me for sponsoring me. So I could increase my lightning bolt and my shield both by one. So my shield goes up here, my lightning bolt goes up here, and then I would get a total of 25 and 15, so 40 bucks. And then once everybody does their payday, you have one more day to, to do an action. Before then, it's day seven and it's race day. So the person who is losing with regards to points, they get to build the track. So they, they pick eight track pieces, and then they lay them out on the board. The only rules are that it has to fit within the play area of the board. This is modular as well, so this could be placed anywhere. You can actually build a track that can suit your car or that can stick it to your neighbor. So if you have your buddy who is, his car is almost blowing up, you can put in a track piece, a whole lot of track pieces that have a bunch of areas where they have to roll for damage. If it is good for you to have a bunch of straightaways, you can just build yourself a bunch of straightaways. And this is an excellent piece of the game because there's so much replayability, you never have the two same maps. You have so many different options here. So let's pick eight and we'll build a quick map. All right, so here we go. I have eight map pieces. This is the track that we're racing on. All right, so we have our player order we figured out earlier in the game. So the person who has one, they get to go first. So this would be the yellow car. 
Now you can choose to go to start off at any speed that you want to start off with. So you can go anywhere from 2 to 10. So let's say, whatever, I'm going to get off to a quick start. I'm going to go 10. On your first turn, you can't attack your opponent. So everybody gets at least one shot to get out of the gate and actually hit the track and start to do stuff before they have to worry about getting destroyed. So, okay, so this guy, I say he's going to go 10. So you could count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10. Okay, so I went through an orange, I'm green, so I have to roll one, two dice to see how much damage I take if I take damage. So there are going to be custom dice for this game. Um, in the meantime, there's a little chart on rolling D6s. So again, this is just prototype stuff. A four on the damage chart means that I would lose one speed and I would lose one of my armor, and then I would lose one fan. Because whenever you take damage going around a turn, you lose a fan. But a five or a six means no damage. So if you take no damage, you actually gain a fan because you do some kind of cool stunt. So now the next person in line is the purple car. So I'm going to say he's going to go seven. And then the blue car will say he's going to go seven as well. Uh-oh. So you can share a space, but when you end on a space that your opponent is on, you actually uh, slam into them. So each car would roll for damage. So this will be the blue car, nothing. He takes no damage because it's a, a five or six. And then the purple car, okay, nothing as well. So now you're gonna look to see the, the player order for next. So you go by who is moving the quickest. So right here we see this guy's doing seven, seven, and nine. So right away, we know that the, the blue car or I'm sorry, the yellow car is going to be, they're moving the quickest. So they are the first player. And then if you look at these two with them being both the same, you would look and you would count up the value of the speedometers that they have to see who has a higher number there. So now with these two, they're both going the same. They're both going seven. So to see who goes next, you're gonna look at these little odometers here and the person who has the highest number uh, will be the one to go next, that'll break the tie. So now, you have a choice of, do I want to accelerate? Do I want to slow down? Or do I want to coast? So if you coast, you continue doing the same speed around the track. If you accelerate, you can look and you do one plus, you can accelerate one plus whatever these are. So I could accelerate one, two, three. The maximum is 10. Or if you want to slow down, you can slow down by one plus these upgrades here. So one, two, three. So I could actually go from a nine to a six. So this guy's coming up to a red corner. He's going to want to slow down. Otherwise, he's going to have to roll a whole lot of damage. So I'm actually going to slow down three. So one, two, three. He'll slow down to six. So now he crossed two reds. So he has to actually roll two dice for damage. So he would roll, he would take his damage, and so on. All right, so now let's take the purple person's turn. So he's going seven, and he has this weapon here that lets him pick one target up to three spaces away and do two damage. So I know that I wanna do at least get to this area here. So I'm going to stay, so you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll stay doing seven, come through here. Now I have to roll one damage die because I crossed orange and I'm doing it all speed. Three, so I would lose one speed, one armor, and one fan. Now I decide I want to attack that guy. So I'm actually going to use this card. I'll flip it over and he's my target. So I do two damage to that car. So he goes down two. And if you see here now, this card is flipped over, which means I can't use it anymore. But if I ever land on an icon, you know, for the weapon or the shield, I can choose to reactivate that. So this being a weapon, if I land on the weapon icon, I can actually flip this over and this is active for me to use again on my next turn. So that's the gist of the game. You continue to the end. Yellow crosses the finish line. Boom. Yellow would go over here to turn to third in the player order. And then they would get 
three victory points plus their number of fans. So that would be worth eight victory points for yellow. Purple finished second. So purple gets two plus the number of fans. They have four. So purple goes up to six victory points. And then blue limps along over the finish line and they get nothing. <laughs> no points whatsoever. And that's the sheer basics of racing. There is more to it, but this is just, this is just the bare basic concepts of, of running through this race. So once your race is over, you take your player order again, and it's whoever's uh, losing. So in this case, blue would be player one, purple would be player two, and the white yellow guy would be player three. Then what you would do is anything that's been exhausted, so let's say that I never refresh that weapon, gets discarded, and then everything in these lines gets discarded, so discarded as well. And then you go ahead and you put new cards out to refill all these, like you did at the beginning of the game, and then you start the next round. The person who was, who's losing, which in this case would be blue, would get to build the next track. So then for your next race, you could have something like that, or like that. So as you can see, the options are endless with what kind of track you can build. So that's it, that's the very, very basics of the game. Like I said, there's a whole lot more to it. This is just a very, very basic, brief run through of the game. So. Let's take you back up top and I will tell you my thoughts on this absolutely awesome game. So Neon Knights kind of popped to me because it looked like Tron meets some kind of race car game. Now visually this game is stunning. So in Neon Knights there's two kind of different phases. So the first phase you're doing all this prep work to build your car, to get yourself some sponsors, to get yourself some weapons, to soup things up, maybe to find ways to get some money at the end of a race. And this in and of itself is quite a, quite a cool aspect of the game. So we found ourselves going around in a little circle, kind of getting a kick out of, okay, oh, you're, you're taking that and I want that one, so I'm gonna pay extra to get that part because I don't want you to have that part, which was a, a very neat aspect in and of itself. And then, once you're done with that, you get to actually race these cars. Now, when you're racing, it gets very competitive. We had a lot of fun with this because not only were we zipping around to see who would like reach the finish line first, but at the same time, we also got to really kind of get each other with a little bit of take that. Now, I am not usually one for a take that kind of game because it gets kind of frustrating if one person's always on the receiving end, but with this game, it worked out fantastic. There was just, it was the right amount of take that with a ton of comedy thrown in because you might be flying through a corner, you're taking damage, and for me, when we were running through this yesterday, um, I, had, I was behind, winning points-wise, but I was way behind in the race, and the only thing that I could do to kind of catch up was take a risk that would throw me around a corner, make me roll a bunch of damage, and then, on a whim, I said, you know what, I'm gonna slam into one of my buddies, because this way, if I succeed, I'll hopefully knock him out and I'll be able to catch up. And if I don't, eh, I'm already losing, so no, no harm, no foul. So that aspect of the game was an absolute riot. I cannot, I cannot convey how much we actually enjoyed this. When we were finished, it was, it was one of those games that it was absolutely, we would get together tomorrow and play this again. And next time we would do this, 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 and this. And here's what I thought was also great. So. The, the, the prototype or the print and play that we had was for four players. This game supports up to six players. Now these tracks get congested with three players, the three players that, that um, I played with. And the idea of six people tootling around trying to you know, bump into each other and shoot each other and launch an EMP or something, I can only imagine how much fun that, that would be. On top of that, one thing that I appreciated about this is, you know, going through it again at the beginning, it seemed a little complex. Once we understood the rules, it, you take a step back and you go, this game is super, super understandable and super simple to where I could play this with my kids. I, I think this is a perfect game for a casual gamer. In fact, one of the people that I tested this with is more of a casual gamer. There were three of us. I play a lot of games. Um, one of my other buddies, he plays a good amount of games. Uh, but the third person that we had playing with us, he he could take or leave it. He likes playing games to an extent, but he's he loves video games. Um, but he he even he said this game is a lot of fun. And as as he was leaving at the end of the night, he's like, you know, I'm not usually one 
for a, a lot of games, you know, that's your guys' thing. He says, but this was a lot of fun. I love the aspect of the potential there's a campaign in it. I didn't have any experience with it that wasn't in the print and play, but just reading through the rules and seeing the, the thought that you could continue on uh, on the path that you've made, you know what I mean? So your, your car, you might focus on, for one race, building up your weaponry, and you might still have some cool weapons to go into the next race, or you might lose them, or whatever it is. But to be able to maintain your skills that you have jacked into your brain, which is pretty pretty cool feature, but just to be able to continue that from game to game to game and build upon that. And if anything, that would be my only complaint that we had was that, and, and this was as much on us, um, was that it was almost over before we wanted it to be over. Now. Full disclosure, at the start of the game, you set the number of races that you want to play. So we said, hey guys, we're going to do three races and then we'll call it quits. It was late, you know, um, we had a lot going on, but I just wanted to make sure that we got this in. So once we started going, it was like, oh man, this is great. Uh, now we're done. So to me, that was a very good sign because we actually wanted to play the game more. Anyway, look at it, lots of fun. Let's talk about the art. When I saw the art of this game, I was just astounded. I was instantly drawn to it because it had a very Tron vibe to it. And I start scrolling and looking at the game and I'm like, this aesthetically looks wonderful, man. The art is top notch. My print and play prototype that I put together real quick in a matter of a couple of hours on an inkjet printer does not do the art justice. When you see the pictures of the, of the art mock-up, if the final product looks half as good as this mock-up does, the, it's just gonna be breathtaking. I love the fact that everything is like a neon, aqua, neon pink, neon purple, neon blue. The, the colors, they're, they're just really cool. And the whole like post-apocalyptic vibe to it, I loved it. I, I cannot say enough good things about this. You might think that I'm kind of babbling on and on about how much I like this. I, I'm so blown away and so surprised at how much fun that this ended up being that I, I, that's what you see, you see my excitement. There were a few things that we weren't totally excited about that I thought could have been changed a little bit. And again, this is a prototype, but the way some of the iconography printed out, we had a hard time telling the difference between a few of the icons. But when I look at the mock-up, the mock-up looks good. When I look at my cards and my print job on my you know, inkjet printer on linen paper, left a little bit to be desired. But I'm sure that'll be ironed out at the end. This game also seems like it's ripe for the picking for expansions. It, what you do with your car and the type of car that you have, you could just run wild with that. You know, maybe a car that could go quicker because it has more, um, you know, ways to accelerate, but it might have fewer shields or you might have more opportunities for weaponry versus whatever. Uh, there is a lot of room for expansion in this. So Neon Knights, October 10th, it's hitting Kickstarter. Check it out. And I, I hope that your experience with the game is as good as mine was. So guys, my name is Lee from Geek City USA. Thank you for spending some time watching and go ahead, like, subscribe. Uh, chat with me down in the comments. I would love to interact with you guys. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for spending your time. And I will see you next time.